if the if the umpire says over, is it a, is it a point where uh, are we going to get if we get into this point, are we going to get to a point where we're going to have a bowler getting replaced halfway through the over by another bowler because he bowls better at him because he just walked off? Well, it's nonsense, absolute nonsense. I I, I I just think I just think from from that point of view, I've worked so hard as a bowler to keep him down as non strikers end. You've got somebody in who's got 50, who's battered nicely and going well. I'm making sure I bowl one side of the wicket. I've got four feelers on the leg side. If he hits me for six, I'm bowling to that plan. Fair enough, he's hit me for six. What shot? Great shot. But I'm trying to get one because the bloke coming in at the other end, right, maybe on one, two, none, just come in or whatever. I'm going to bring my field up, take a chance and bowl at him for three or four balls to change the game, the course of the game for my team. What happens if he walk? He can't walk off. He can't walk off. That's just not the right. It's not in the not in the spirit of the game. Okay, guys, great to see you. We haven't got George with us this week, um, uh, but uh, he will be back on uh, England duty uh, for the Cricketer Magazine this week from Trent Bridge. Myself will be uh, delivering updates throughout. Talk sport, and I think Harmy might appear on the Talk Sport Breakfast Show on Friday as well. So, plenty going on, and there's been plenty going on in T20 as well, the domestic side of things. Um, but first off, I want to talk about retirements, uh, tactical retirements. That seems to be the uh, the big topic on social media this week, and maybe in the stands as well. I, I wouldn't know. The top line. Um, let's start with you first, Nick. Great to see you. So the story this week essentially picked up from where the IPL left off, didn't it? Um, The game between Birmingham and Nottinghamshire, two very quick substitutions in a row. Um, First off, Carlos Brathwaite took himself out of uh, the batting lineup because he thought that uh, his replacement, Sam Hain, could potentially hit uh, a spinner last over better than he. And then an hour later or so, Samit Patel with um, Nottinghamshire needing three runs to win, he basically substituted himself for somebody who could run faster. So, yeah, make of that what you will. But from your perspective, is this just uh, an exciting new innovation that's been brought to the game? Or uh, is it just open, essentially, for people to take the mick and it doesn't quite sit right with you? I think there's... It's an, it's an interesting one. What I would say first up is that it's weird because it's not an innovation because it's because it's in it's there written in the in the rules and the laws of the game and the playing just, you know this isn't it's not as simple as taking advantage of something you know, it it's or or, or a full funny loophole like it it exists it retired out has always existed you know as as an option for for batting teams it's not been I mean actually I ironically actually think Sam Patelinson it's closer to what happened in the Big Bash with Jordan Silk I want to say who actually wasn't retired out but he came in with a hamstring problem then they pulled him out for someone who was fully fit we think with the ball to go um that he was deemed retired hurt so it didn't actually get didn't quite get the same coverage but uh, well yeah the first thing I say is I don't think it's it's what, what, what I find quite interesting is that I think we've been waiting I think we've been waiting for it to happen forever haven't we for, so from a T20 perspective from a certainly from when it felt like the T20 game in the last decade, half decade, has become, you know, much more. Um, I, I guess when when marginal games games become that much more um, central to T Twenty cricket, and, and you know, and, and teams have looked into every single way of you know find that extra run, they're taking that extra wicket, so you know, you know, putting the very best men in the right positions, all that kind of thing. That, that I guess you know, you've always has always been done to an extent, but has really been honed in on in recent times in franchise cricket and T twenty cricket and as I say when you look you know when you're looking when you know how fine the margins are, um it was always a case of it's gonna happen once and then it was good then it would not necessarily open the floodgates, but it would allow it to happen more regularly. Um so I don't think it's a surprise that it's that this has happened, you know, eff- effectively in the first possible major tournament after Ravage Andrew Ashwin Ashwin did it in the IPL. I I don't love it. Um I just think, and I'm sure Harmi will agree with this, but I just think as a bowling team, as a fielding team, as a bowler, the one bit of the game that is that should be in your favour is the right to dictate who is 
who you've got at the crease. That's sort of in your favour, isn't it? You know, you you're you're the bowling team, and actually, if you guys are, if you've, you know, if you've um, I've not articulated that very well, but I, but I think that's the one bit of the game in in what, in what is already a very batter friendly game that that I've always felt like should remain in the fielding team's control, and that it shouldn't be for the batters to to line up the bowlers as they as they mark their run up to decide who they'd rather face if you see what I mean otherwise um, yeah I don't know where yeah I don't know I'd, I'd, I'd say I I don't quite know where I stand I'd, I'd say I don't I don't love it for that mainly for that reason but, I, but I'm also conscious that this isn't a loophole this has been this has been something that's been sat there unused you know for a very long time and obviously in the longer forms of the game you, you wouldn't take that option to retire someone out it's very much it's very much geared towards you know, it's a short form dismissal, isn't it? Because where you're not worried about being bowled out, and it's very much looking at the next ball, and the next over. So, yeah, I mean, I'd be interested to know what Harmy thinks. I, mean, I, I, I suspect you think similar in terms of as a bowler wanting, feeling like you are, you you deserve that bit of control. I think it's up there with a man card, me. I think it's a shocker. I think it's an absolute shocker. You should be the, the, the it should be used. The ball should be used. So if you're going to walk off, you know, you can retire yourself out, but you use up a ball. I, I I think it's wrong. I think it's it, it's wrong in every single in every single way. As a bowler, first of all, IPL IPL innings are now nearly two hours. If you're going to have a revolving door, people coming on and off, because you, people talk about matchups in the shortest format of the game. If a batsman is legs legs bowling, the art of captaincy is making sure you're bringing bowlers on who can affect the game at the at the next relevant point against the person who is at the, at the, at the non-striker's end or at the striker's end. If the, if the umpire says over, is it, a, is it a point where, uh, are we going to get, if we're getting to this point, are we going to get to a point where we're going to have a bowler getting replaced halfway through the over by another bowler because he bowls better at him because he's just walked off? Well, it's nonsense. Absolute nonsense. I, 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 I just think, I just think from, from that point of view, I've worked so hard as a bowler to keep him down a non strike is in. You've got somebody in who's got 50, who's battered nicely and going well. I'm making sure I bowl one side of the wicket. I've got four feelers on the leg side. If he hits me for six, I'm bowling to that plan. Fair enough, he's hit me for six. What shot? Great shot. But I'm trying to get one because the bloke coming in at the other end, right? Maybe he's on one, two, none, just come in or whatever. I'm going to bring me field up, take a chance and bowl at him for three or four balls to change the game, the course of the game for my team. What happens if he walk? He can't walk off. He can't walk off. That's just not the right. It's not in the not in the spirit of the game. It's not right in the game. And when I look at what happened this week, I I think that the ball should have. If you walk off, there's a delivery gone. And then all of a sudden, Carlos Brathwaite doesn't walk off. You know, they've got 16 off the last over. Brathwaite doesn't walk off with five balls to go. Sam Sam Patel can't walk off. Because they need three to win on the last ball. And if there's a delivery used when you walk off, the game's over. He has to run the three. So for me, something has to be, it's up there. With, for me, as I'm speaking purely as a bowler, that this whole one day white ball revolution has changed. And I sound like a, I sound like a Freddie Truman from the 1960s, you know, in my day. And it goes back. But I tell you what, uh, for me, it's up there with, with the man card in. It shouldn't. It shouldn't happen. The the game has gone so far in the batsman's favour, and I don't mind that because it's entertainment. But the skill and the art of bowling is to make sure that you can work within six balls to try and keep somebody at one end to use your skills to try and change the course of the game for your team. You can't just have somebody walking on and off. The, the game's going to last five hours if they're going to keep doing that. Homie, oh, as a as think- a Test cricketer, did you ever? Go off the field and uh, allow maybe a younger, faster, better fielder than you on the on the pitch for for a period. I went to the toilet. I went to the toilet. I went to change my boots. I went to there. We're, we're talking Did about. Did you run there or back? An effect. I know you. I know you're gonna. I know you're gonna bring the. I know you're gonna bring the Gary no, Pratt no. into the equation. I know that Simon Gary Jones. Came on Simon pro- Jones was. Young. Yeah, he was properly injured. Though. Yeah, I understand. I'm not, I wasn't gonna bring but Gary that, Pratt, but. In, but did you? But in the rules of the game, in the, in, in the rules of the game, you've got to be off for a full over. So you have to be off for a full over. You can have two overs off to get to where that comes. 
So did that's you, not changing. So did that, you ever? That's not changing the course of the game. Did you? He doesn't get a bat or a ball. No, but he gets the field at point. Did you ever go off the field <laughs> and finish your ablutions within an over, but then just think, ah, oh, I'll just stick around for another over and then trot back? Well, you had the two overs to come <laughs> off, and that was the, um, the third umpire would be in to get you back on the field. You had no real change of. I'd like to think if I'd like to think if if I was in the field in the field and a catch came my way. I would catch it. I would catch it. I'm a I'm I'm a competent fielder. I, I'm I can catch it. So whether you bring another fielder on, it, it, they're not changing the dynamics of the game. We are. They're not changing the dynamics of the game in that that. Front. We're talking about somebody coming in to potentially hit twenty off and over to change the course of a game, and that and and they're heavily involved in the game. For me, it's that pursuit of it's. I guess, I guess, in a positive light, it's, it's a sign of the, 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 yeah. I, I guess the the use of data, the use of analysis, how closely teams are looking at things. Um, it feels like a, it, it it's like that next step in pursuit of perfection, isn't it? And that's the thing that I think I struggle with slightly. That there, I think sport has to retain, and this is sometimes where you know when when teams misuse matchups, it's almost like you're so. When you can become over dictated to at times by, or you allow yourself to be over dictated to by, by data at times, the, the 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 effect of that is that you sort of stop using your own, you stop 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 thinking about the game yourself, don't you? And sport still has to be about gut instinct. And and, and as Harvey says, like if you if a guy's struggling at, I what what I don't like is the idea that someone is struggling at one end because you bowled really well at him, and then he just turns around and walks off. Because for me, that's just not. It's you know, look, in a game of football, you. If a guy's having a shocker, yeah, look, the board goes up. You take him off. You bring the you bring the sub on. That's all, you know. That's that's all written into the into the laws of the game. It's um, you get three per game. It's just part of the course. Like the, but because we've never really had that in cricket. Um, obviously, we had the, you know, certainly not in that. Certainly not real time substitution. Obviously, there was that time of the the super sub that in that exists in ODI cricket for a bit, and then and we got concussion substitutes and that kind of thing. But real time changes based on performance. Obviously, the bowler gets it at the end of each over, with, you know, through the captain. But for for a batter to be able to turn around because he's struggling, I think, uh, yeah, it, uh, that's the bit that I'm I struggle to get my head around slightly. And that I, the, the the bowling team has has earned you score you you being fourteen not out of twenty five balls in a T twenty game. They've earned that because no matter how badly you're playing, they've almost certainly bowled in such a way that it stopped you scoring. Um, I don't. If you don't want to be out there anymore, turn around, and smack your sumps over. You know, like be you know, run Use past the ball, walk off, put your bat under. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I. So I don't, I don't love it because I, because I feel like it does go that step towards uh, removing the the emotion and the, the, I guess the you know the real time play from from sport. But at the same time, I do sort of respect teams for doing it um, because. As I say, it's always been it's always been there in the regs. It's just been wait. It was a case of waiting for someone to do it, um, and especially and actually almost almost. It doesn't surprise me that it happened in a rain affected game, because you're not going to lose ten wickets in eight overs. So you know, I I thought it made complete. I actually thought I thought it made complete sense that the two teams did it when they did it. I thought it made complete sense when when Sam Patel was pulled out, um, and I thought it made complete sense what. Brathwaite as well. I actually thought it showed a really clear head as well from a captain. You know, Brathwaite's the captain to, to pull yourself in with an over to go when you're when you're the guy with the reputation for clearing the ropes to death. Really shows the extent to which teams are thinking about every single ball in a game of T Twenty cricket or eight over cricket as that was. Um, I think we'll see it more in limit in proper rain affected games as well because I think as I say there is so little so little chance being bowled out that if that if you've got a guy who's ten off thirteen balls in eight in an eight over game, you're screwing your team. So it, it it makes it makes complete sense for number four to just walk onto the field and number three to look up and see that his time's up. Um, and as I say, while it's in the regs, I I can hundred percent see why teams would take advantage of that. And but I, I am with Harmy on that. I think if you're going to do it, it should there should be a delivery involved, especially if it is because you are retired out. You know, you know, Carlos Brathwaite is down as a fall of wicket on the scorecard, so that should I think that should count as a delivery. Can I? Um, can I just yeah. just ask a point of order, which I'm not 100% sure about. But so Carlos Brathwaite saw that a leg spinner was coming on, 
realised that he his matchups didn't really tally with that, so took himself off. Could yeah, not sure, not sure taking Calvin Harrison off and brought Seymour once he was once he walked off the field. And then what? And then could <laughs> he can't come back? <laughs> but could Sam? Ha- no, not Sam Hayne. Alex Davies, I think it was. Could he once that he realised he's not going to face leg spin? Could he then retire himself out and then somebody else come in? Well, I mean, where, how, thing, where this, can it, how many? The thing, the thing I would say without. Well, the thing I'd say that I, I, without a constant not cheapening it, I, I, I think a lot of thought goes into it, and I don't think it's as. And we're not, you know, we're talking about, you know, Carlos Brathwaite. If you threw him six leg spinners, you know, he would back himself two and six. You know, this is the guy, you know, who sees a leggy come down and runs out of the way. You know, they're all high class professional creatures. It's not a case of Alex Davis can't face, or I think it was Sam Sam Hayne that came out. It's not a face, not a case of Sam Hayne not being able to face. Yeah, Sam Hayne. You know, sorry, someone, yeah. some bowling, you know some bowling quick and then call himself in so I think it's that I think that cheapens it slightly because I think it's I do genuinely think a lot of thought goes into it and that um, so it might you know in the same way that a lot of thought, go, thought goes into bowling changes and you might bring someone on and it might, and it might not work and then you know, might get pumped but you know that doesn't mean but you wouldn't take yourself off if you see what I mean so I don't think Alex Davis would walk off because it's not the intended match up for him I think you just accept you sort of you accept that it's not quite gone to plan and you get on with it so I don't I, I think it, I, I still think it will happen sparingly, and I, actually, I think the fact that it, there, there's only one in the IPL and it's taken till now for one to happen in the blast does show that it's not going to be teams aren't going to do it willy nilly because there's, if you're playing on a tough deck and someone's twenty off thirty, there's nothing to say that he's not the man best positioned to actually score on that pitch. You know, if it's a tough pitch, it's going to take the next guy 10, 15 balls to get in anyway. Well, that's that, so you might that end up the then, thing. I mean, how many, if it's twenty or thirty plus fifteen balls, how many, you might you might then be twenty seven or forty. How many, I mean, as, as a pair, if you see what I mean, it's, it's, un, it's unlikely to have ever happened. But you know, how would you have felt if a batter had taken brought himself on because he fancied taking you on, basically? You know, I'd have loved it. Here we go. <laughs> let's go. Yeah, yeah, let's have a game. I'd have loved. I'd have loved it. Well, Ironically, you sort of talked about that last thing. week. Was it last week? I know week one or? thing. I know one thing. If it did happen to me, no matter whether it was in the shortest format or not, I'm not sure you would have gotten many in his heart. And I would have said, good luck hitting these 90 mile an hour exercises at your helmet with three men back. If you want to hit, if you hit two sixes, good on you, Matt. But they're coming. It would be a contest. It would get you going. But I just think from that point of view, I just think, where does it stop? It gets farcical. And then because. Yeah, just to finish on it, like I said before, two hours to get an IPO. The, the regulations in this game now, the arrogance and the egos that have played the game at the shorts format, time constraint is not involved. Not involved at all. In, in top-level sport, it's not involved. I watched I watched a game of tennis between Nadal and it was Nadal the other day. And they were bouncing the ball 20-odd times just to wind each other up. The referee got in a little bit. But they weren't interested. They were not interested. You're not going to tell me what to do. Shot clock in the golf now. They're going, no, just find me. I'm not bothered. You're not going to tell me what to do. We're getting to a point where this is going to be farcical. If there's going to be people running on and off the field, the game is not the shortest format of the game anymore. It's going to last although, forever. Although they are. Switch people off. Although it, although it is a wicket, though. So, it's you know, you're not going to have it. You're not going to have, you know, it, it, it still, it would just count as a wicket. So, I don't know that it would take that long. I just feel, you know, if you, if, as I say, Brathwaite couldn't come back out, he counts as one of the tennies out. So, um, I don't, I don't know if it would make it any longer than it already is. Yeah, but you start <laughs> I agree to roll the ball. So we do it four yeah, times. Yeah. We do it four times. That's like four wins. You've got two and a half minutes, there's 10 minutes. We start and bowl the ball. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I see, where you're, sorry, I see where you're coming from. Yeah. I, I am, um, yeah, as I say, I, I don't love it, but I, but while it exists, and I think it will exist. I, 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 I am, I'm intrigued. I'm intrigued by it more than anything else because I think there are significant upshots potentially if if it goes right. No. But I think you can also it's up, up there with a man can. But, well, but, but, but this is the thing: like if, if the guy, if you use there, it, isn't it? Man can, they change the laws. But, if you, man but what would be interesting is if you use it and then someone comes in. You know, let's so let's say let's say Brathwaite would use the. I mean, as I said, the eight over games was the wrong example. But let's say you call someone in after the ninth over. Because he's struggling, and then, then the next lad's out. Then the next lad's out first ball. You've lost two. You've lost two wickets in one ball. So I don't. So I don't think it'll be used that often, because I do think I still think it's an. I still think it's a massive risk because you are, as I say, often you'll be calling guys in who are very good players who are probably struggling. So it's not easy to score out there. And then if you bring a new lad in, 
who's going to have to dig in and work his way around, you know, work his way into the innings anyway. You ju- you could well end up having wasted a good portion of your innings trying to get two guys in when actually the bloke you've called back in may well have been pretty close to, you know, to, to getting going. So if it's used in, in situations like with Patel and, um, and Brethway, I I think that is the right time to use it. I, um, as I say, those short, those really short games, I think will be interesting. I'm sure it'll happen a lot more now that they've done it. Okay, shall we? Uh, shall we end this topic because it's been a it has been a a, a, a <laughs> huge top line, uh, and we'll move on to uh, moments of the week. Moments of the week. Okay, guys. Well, at the start of uh, the season, we confidently predicted solid campaigns for Surrey. For Lancashire and Nottinghamshire, they were the top three, weren't they? And certainly, if you look at the table, Surrey unbeaten, Lancashire unbeaten. Um, and despite all the uh, retirement shenanigans, Nottinghamshire, well, you know, still absolutely in with the place in the top four. I don't think anybody's been ruled out yet, but not quite working for them quite as well as those other two big beasts, Nick. Um, what do you put that down to? They've just, well, it's weird. They've got going in sort of fits and starts, and like, what when Alex Hales was. Um... I mean, Alex Hales was on TV, wasn't he, against Derbyshire? He was. He made ninety off. Was it ninety off thirty? Ninety one. I think ninety off thirty three. Um, and I mean, you sort of watch them and wonder how they ever lose. But um, they've just not quite got going yet, have they? Like, if you look at the, I mean, if you look, if you look, if you look at the lads who've got the the big runs in the competition, you'd norm. I mean, historically, you'd expect Hales, Clark. Uh, well, Hales Clark, especially, I guess, to be right up there at the top. I mean, Alex Hales has got 150 odd runs. I think they're about 20, 25 guys ahead of him, and um, and I don't think there's anyone. I don't think there's anyone else close to him in that not side runs wise. I think Dan Christian got 50 last night. Steve Mullaney got 70 odds. Um, sorry, last night being record, recording Tuesday on 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 Monday. I mean, um, they've just, I guess, it, it, without being old, very cliche about it, it's it's just the nature of T20 cricket, isn't it? That they've um, that and that that seriously, I think as we've seen, most teams can beat each other. As we talked last week about Leicestershire having that shocking start and then suddenly rocking up against Yorkshire with with the most stacked top seven imaginable and and beating them fairly comfortably. Um, yeah, Ken. So Ken thrashing Middlesex uh, this week. Yeah, exactly. Ken, who couldn't win a game in Middlesex, who were who were flying, and then suddenly, you know, suddenly they, as you say, they properly beat them. I'm sure we'll talk about Joe Denley a bit a bit later, but I. Um, I just think, it's, without being a, giving a really boring answer, I think it's just the nature of the beast, isn't it? I, that they've they've they're still early enough that they can get back into it. Jake Balls in the wickets, I think, as he was a couple of years ago. I think he was leading wicket taker, wasn't he, in twenty twenty? I think he's got eleven, and he's their top wicket taker with eleven. He's two off Jake Linton, I think, at the top. And um, so bits of the game are working. I just feel like they've probably not put together a complete game yet. I think even last night they were chasing two hundred and they were thirty for four. And we're, actually, that's been weird because. As I say for such a stacked batting lineup, they found themselves. Um, I think it was Lanks who bowled out for ninety. I think it was their lowest ever score at Trent Bridge. Um, they were, I think, they, yeah, they were they were ten for was it fifteen for five or something very early on, and that was, um, as I say, sort of pretty similar last night. They'd lost, I think, against Lanks, they'd lost about four wickets before Alex Hales, Alex Hales had faced a ball. They were thirty for four last night with Hales, Clark, Patel, Duckett all out. Uh, fifty for five with Tom Moore's out. And still got to 180 because the quality they've got all the way down. But it's, but yeah, I just don't think they've quite put together. Um, I mean, I, I don't not I don't think. I mean, they they haven't put put together the complete game that everyone knows they can do yet. But equally, they've got form for that in this competition. Weirdly, I mean, they, you know, they should have walked their way to the final last year. But I'm sorry, they went to the semis last year. But they lost. Do you remember they were flying against Hampshire, but managed to lose all that. But got spun out on a slow one at Trent Bridge, chasing 130, and managed to lose. That semi-final in 2019, when they were flying against Worcester, and they managed to lose by one. Um, but then in between, they obviously think they lost one game against. They lost one game in 2020 when they won it. So they're funny, aren't they? You feel like they should walk every year, but they, but yeah, they do stumble around at times. Uh, Harmy Graham Clark, brother of Jordan, uh, top third in the list of uh, highest uh, run scorers. Tell us a little bit about him. Yeah, good player. He's. Done very, very well in the short format for Durham over the course of the last three years, three, four years. He's um, quite. He's, uh, he plays quite correct. I mean, somebody that goes in the top and he's got a huge, he's got a good strike rate. He he stands there, hits the ball nicely down the ground. Um, he's he's a very sort of he's a very very powerful batsman through extra cover. 
Um, and he's he is a good player. He's somebody who I think has made noises in the last two or three years in in the shorts format, especially in 2020, of getting of getting Durham off to a, a good start. Um, along with Young Jones, who's had a good decent start to the, uh, the, the the sort of 2020 campaign as well. Durham have got a good side. Durham have got a good side, um, but they haven't like a little bit like Knots. They haven't really put too many perfect games together. And I think when I think the the captain Ashton Turner got injured um, early early on, I think that derailed Durham a little bit because I think they'd set the set the stall out overseas sort of batsman, and then all of a sudden he I think he I'm not sure he dislocated his shoulder or he, he did something to his shoulder and that had to bring in. Um, Andrew Tai, who was a, a different type of cricketer, uh, a very good cricketer for Australia, but a different type of cricketer, um, and it just changed the sort of balance of, of of the Durham side. But Clark's a good player, along with what they've got, likes of Beddingham and uh, and others. Um, Durham haven't got a bad side, but the 2020 so far, it, look, Nick was mentioning about knots for 14 games, you can have a slow start and then. Hit, this, you know, hit your straps last four or five games, managed to get into the last sort of last spot of quarterfinals, and then you're on a roll going in, into finals day. So, Notts have been a surprise, and Hampshire have been a surprise. Hampshire only got two points so far this se- this season, but they've got obviously one game less than some others in the South Division. Um, but you look at the two top teams of each each group. I know we're, we're not supposed to talk about Surrey on on following on county cricketer, but <laughs> Surrey looks strong and Lang- in Lancashire looks strong. And Liam Livingston, what what an outfit that is. You took Parkinson back in, who's back in for being released, released from a test squad to go and play. That powerhouse of, you know, I'll miss people out here, Salt, Butler, Livingston. Um, yeah, Jennings has Davids. been scoring runs for them. Villas has been scoring runs for them. Tim David, it's that is that is some side, and you chuck a leg spinner in it. Um, if they can get to finals, there, I tell you what, they'll take some beating. I think also that oh, well, Army, George, very quickly on, on some that Army touched on there with, I guess, not having to start well. I think what's quite interesting this year as well is because it's effectively been played in a block, um, momentum has become, yeah, I mean, almost sort of peaking at the right time is more important than it has been in the past. I think last year, previous years, has been a bit of a lottery because you, you win the group. Then you have to wait a few weeks for your quarterfinal. Then you've got a week, wait a few more weeks for, for for finals day. By which point, you know, Rashid Khan has never gone to finals day with Sussex, and yet he's almost, you know, he's done a big part. He's done a big part of getting them there every year. Um, but because of that gap, you almost go in and you're sort of cold when you know you almost can't carry the impetus you take from the early, from your early wins into the into the latter stages. So actually, this year, if you can, even if you're Kent, you know, having lost their first, you know, they won it last year, lost their first five this year, were pretty. Ropey. I mean, until yeah, until they beat Middlesex and Joe Denley, Joe Denley got 40, 40, I think forty or forty six balls against Surrey, and then suddenly got one hundred or fifty balls the next game. And it only takes that knock to sort of spin their campaign back sort of into life. And then, but this year, I mean, they're going to have to win seven of their last ten or so to to make it into that those last stages. But if they can do that, then they're probably you know best place because because actually they can forget about the first five and they'll have that momentum behind them. And then if you go in, when you call to final. The change around from quarter final to finals day this year is is hardly anything, um, which which is I think is massively significant. Because in the past, it's been pretty hard for team, pretty frustrating for teams who've dominated the early stages, and then if you take Essex when they won it in twenty nineteen, were shocking through the first half of the competition, managed to just about sneak into the qualify, sneak into qualify, then had a very very good day on finals day, having got, having got to finals day and won it. Whereas teams who'd started really well sort of tailed off by then. Yeah, I mean, the uh, the final stay is the middle of July, isn't it? 16th of July or something. So it's going to go pretty much all the way through. Uh, I want to talk to you about a guy that you must have played against, actually, Harmy. Michael Hogan, who uh, plays for Glamorgan. Um, he uh, he hadn't bowled since 2019, and he's in the uh, one of the leading wicket-takers. I saw him take three or four wickets against Surrey in a game that Surrey actually won. That was a crazy old game, by the way, Nick, wasn't it? We were both there for that one. Um, he took three or four wickets against Sussex the night before. And it just showed, oh, he's 41, Harmy. So, you know, still, you've, you've got the boots there. You've got a bat behind you. Got a helmet or two. <laughs> Pluck no, one of those just, balls. <laughs> yeah, but my boots might fit me. My gloves fit me to hold the bat. But I don't think anybody's got a shirt big enough to fit me at this minute in time, the way they wear these 
skin tight shirt. <laughs> I'm not sure I've actually played against Michael Holden. Uh, Hold, uh, Hogan. I think I've only played against. If I played against him, it was for it was for Western Australia against England in a warm up game in 2002-3. I think that's the only time I would have come against him. I think I was finished when he came over to, oh, to England. Really? Okay. Um, but it's great to see. It's great. To see. He's a really cool story. Go on. Because he only he only made his first class debut at 28. He, like he he was. Um, oh, I spoke to him about this couple of years ago. I'd try no, I wouldn't have played against him. No, no, you wouldn't have done. So he. So 2003, he was playing pub cricket in rural New South Wales, council worker. Uh, I believe he was a, I believe he was a groundsman for the local council. Did all sorts of odd jobs. It's got a really weird. Story. It's a it's a, fact, it's a it's a mental story. He got a call out the blue from Tom Moody offering him a trial, and he still doesn't know who tipped off Tom Moody. He went to Western Australia. He went to the trial, and then suddenly two days later, was a professional cricketer, and then moved over here in. 08 for a Didier Morgan has obviously never left and um, I think I think he must have had a UK passport um, I could have that wrong but he but yeah he was a proper late developer so he was 28 when he started Glamorgan legend I think this is his final year now um, but yeah he yeah he'll test he had one Tim Mert- he's testimonial yeah it? yeah because it got postponed through Covid and Tim Mert had this one I think a couple of years ago where he had not played T20 cricket for ages and they sort of threw him back in because he was short on seamers and the wily old old stages sort of know what to do and just, I think even uh, Toby Brown Jones is on this year I know he's not certainly not as old but he's just running and hit back for length and I, I suspect I've not seen much of I don't think I was at that Surrey Glamorgan game but um, but I, I've not seen I've not seen much of I've not seen Hogan bowl in the blast this year but I suspect he's been sort of hitting back for length with that um, with that with that action of his and I guess um, but yeah and it's, it's just cool to see him up there isn't it as I say someone with his story who didn't think he'd be a professional cricketer when he was 27 and a half and then suddenly at 28 was, you know, suddenly at 41 is what, you know, five, six, seven hundred wickets for Morgan. The thing with it is he's tall and he knows where he's landing it. And because of his experience, Wiley experience, Wiley customer knows where he's going. In in 2020 cricket, it's very it, somebody so tall gets a, the most out of his action. You look at somebody like Jason Holder, who... who no pace whatsoever, does brilliantly in 2020 cricket because he's very, very difficult to hit off a length and difficult to hit through the line of the ball and line up because of the, the amount of steeple and bounce he gets, uh, especially in England surfaces where the ball sometimes sits in. So I think because of that, he's very difficult to get after and players now just think it's got to be every ball's got to go out the ground. And when it comes from a bowler's point of view, he's a very, very good, cool customer who knows what he's doing with it. And um, there are these young upstarts who think, oh, 41-year-old, bowling 78, 79 mile an hour, I'll belt him out of the park. And where before you know it, three of them have uh, three of them have come unstuck and managed to find themselves caught on the boundary. Yeah. I think Naveen al hacks not not dissimilar in height, is he? He's he's he's, he's a gun, isn't he? He, um, he took five for against Worcester. He was top, top wicket taker last year. Um a very wily bit of recruitment by Leicester that was last year actually, and, and did very well to keep him as well I suspect so I'm sure I'd be surprised if they were the only team that were looking at him this year too What about Obed McCoy one of Jared's favourite players eh Harmy uh, had him at when Jared was over in St Lucia um, just played fresh from the IPL and he's hit the ground running five wickets five for 33 against Somerset four for 30 against Middlesex and he picked up one against Hampshire as well so you know that's quite an introduction it is an introduction. I thought he was brilliant in the IPL. The games are seen for Rajasthan um, at the back end as well. I think he's a cool customer. Obviously, you know, from the, the Caribbean, uh, there's been a, a huge uh, influx into the IPL from the Caribbean. Um, and he's, like you say, he's hit the ground running when he's got here and he's bowled, he's bowled nicely. And that left arm option that everybody loves in T20 cricket, we're, we're, we've got... On TalkSport 2, we've got Holland, England, and England are going to Holland. I know it's in 50-over competition, but they're going with five left-arm seamers because they're trying to get that left-arm option nailed down for the World Cups when they're coming around like thick and fast, fast around the corner in the winter and then obviously next winter. Um, England are, are seeing that in the shortest format of the game, the left-arm option is hugely valuable. Um, and Obed McCoy, is he's a real deal. He is... He is a special talent. The problem he's got is finding a place in the West Indies side because he's done wonderfully well for 
for Rajasthan in the IPL. Done so well so far in the blast. But the West Indies have got a, a huge stock of fast bowlers. Um, he's fighting to get into the national team as well. OK, well, let's move track then. We were just talking about getting into the England squad. And uh, I think we're going to have to change the feature. Instead of race to Amsterdam, it's going to be race to Australia because that's what it's all about. So let's have a little look at uh, those involved. Race to Australia. Well, I know I'm not allowed to speak about Surrey, but Surrey are about to lose quite a few players, aren't they? Jason Roy, Sam Curran and Reese Topley. Uh, Ollie Pope's already up with uh, the England Test squad. But I want to talk about Sam Curran because he does feature. He's in the top 10 in terms of uh, top run scorers, or at least he was on Tuesday. This is going out on Thursday. But what role do you see him playing for England, Harmy, in the uh, in the 50-over game? Um, and do you think uh, also he's going to have a role in the 20-over game, possibly, for that World T20 that takes place in Australia at the end of the year? Yeah, I think he'll get a role in the T20 game. The one thing I'd say with Sam at this minute in time, because of Sam's career and the way it's gone, um, yeah, trying to find a place for him in the test side, trying to find a place for him in the one-day side. Going to Holland, he has to play. If he doesn't play, just leave him at Surrey because he's going brilliantly at the minute. He's taking wickets. He's bowling his four overs. He's coming back from an injury. He's scoring runs. He's, yeah, I would imagine Sam Curran, I don't know the boy, I would imagine he's loving life at this minute in time after horrendous sort of six, eight months that he's missed a lot of cricket. Now, does he fit into England's 50-over side bowling 10 overs and batting at number seven or number eight? Because let's be fair, if you look at that England one-day side, he ain't getting in the top six. He's not getting in the top six. And whether mowing bat six or mowing bat seven, um, I just wonder what, how, what role they're going to use him on. Um, does he feature as the the sort of all rounder with Ben Stokes not not being there, and with Moen at six and Sam Curran at seven? I hope that's what they're going to do and going to use him. And then he doesn't have to bowl his full ten overs because he's coming back from an injury. England play three seamers, the two spinners, and Sam. I'd like to think they'd use him in that way um, because if they're not going to use him going over to Holland. He could play four blast games and do and keep the his his sort of development back into cricket um, and and the momentum going. What I wouldn't like to see is Sam Curran go to to Holland for a week and not play cricket because at the minute he's going brilliantly and he has had an injury and I think he's probably enjoying life for the first time in six eight months. So that would be my only sort of caution of of. Sam Curran and Holland. If he's not got a role, then leave him where he is. What about his new ball partner at Surrey? You say talking about left armers. It's a little and large, isn't it? Reese Topley. I think he's the top wicket taker for Surrey this year. Um, and, and of course, he was part of England's T20 squad in the World T20 2016. It was a very successful tour of the Caribbean, which we covered in, on TalkSport back in February. Um, and of course, coming with his high, out and out, um, wicket taker taking the uh, taking the bowling in the in the power play. What do you think? What do you think to Reese? Do you think he's um, he's going to have a future within fifty and twenty over? I think he's in pole position. Of all the ones that England are taking, I think he's in pole position. He's the one. I think Owen Morgan wants to go into both World Cups with Reese Topley as his main left arm seamer. I think the reason why they've got that many is because. You look at the shortest format, Tamil Mills, you don't know what you're going to get one day or the next from a body position. But, uh, execution of plans, delivery of, of skills, no question whatsoever whatsoever with, with Mills. Is he going to wake up the next morning and be fit enough to play? That's always going to be the... And I think Topley's the same, but I think he's getting better and better from a durability point of view. I actually think Reese Topley is in pole position to play in the big games for England from Morgan's point of view. I think he's the one he wants. I think, I think where the... I love Rich Topley to, be, a, I love Rich Topley to well. be a bowler who could bowl for you know, 15, 20 overs in a deer because if he is fit enough to do that, I think he'd be an outside chance of a test game because I think he's that good. He's that skillful. He, he hits a deck hard. He's got enough pace to get going. He swings the ball. But he's obviously his body just his body just lets him down. If he could bowl the longer format, I don't think he'd be too far away from Test match in all formats of England because 
I actually think he's that skillful and that good. No, I was just going to add on that that is obviously with the, I think with the T20 World Cup in Australia, I think that does probably play into Topley's hands as well, just purely from a of all those five or six left armers they've got, um, knowing how little the white ball moves, um, Topley's height, extra bounce, extra bit of pace probably compared to certainly compared to Curran, Payne, uh, to be honest, probably all bar Mills, I guess. Um, he's probably got that on them as well. Uh, yeah, so I can see that playing to his hands. I, um, I, actually, I actually think Sam Curran, I think actually what we've seen talking about the England test side, the lack of sort of the imbalance from eight downwards, I think does also highlight Curran's, um, the, the importance of Curran, if they can, you know, want, once he's fully fit and played a few first, and um, bowled in first class cricket for Surrey as well, because um, all the talk of four number 11s and stuff, Sam Curran is smoking it at the moment. I mean, I, I was I I was, at, I was at the over when he made six off two, but, yeah. Oh, that um, was the game you were at. We were at together. Gloucestershire. But I was, yeah. But I've also, seen, you know, I've seen, I've seen get so many runs of the championship this season. Just weirdly, still doesn't have a first class hundred, which is a strange little quirk knocking around at the moment. But he's, he just looks, um, even without his bowling, a tremendously confident uh, cricketer at the moment. And um, I think you know, I've got a lot of time for David Willey. Got a lot of time. I really like Tamar Mills if he can, um, if he's fit and which he. You know, hopefully will be. I think his injury got in the in the. I think the injury he picked up at the IPL was extremely minor. I think the injury he picked up at the T Twenty World Cup was, I think, different from ones he's had in the past. Which is, um, I think, I think I've got that right. Um, but once again, wasn't wasn't a major thing. It was just annoying because it ruled him out at, at the time. But um, and David Payne's been in a lot of squads. Well, it's been in a few squads now. Hasn't played yet. I think he's another one who almost needs to go. If, needs to be picked at some point in in the Netherlands because otherwise. You're taking someone around with you. He's a thirty. I think, I think he's thirty, and he's been been around the circuit for a very long time. You know, if you're going to pick him in these squads, you you might as well have to give him a go. See what see what you think of him. So I think it was the same with George Garton through last summer in the winter, and obviously I think he played a sing, a single T20 in the West Indies, and has since I think been sort of trying to deal with long COVID actually. Um, but but yeah, I think it's important that they've. It feels like they've taken all these guys to the Netherlands almost as a. An audition, isn't it? Sort of four or five left armers, almost. You know, it's they all offer different things, which I think help. Um, but I'd certainly think Topley would be the one you'd look at for Australia, just because of what he offers from a trajectory perspective. And I think being different from, you know, depends what we don't know what how fit Joffrey Archer is going to be and guys like that. So we actually don't know what the seam if if the seamers are Mark Wood and Sakiba Mahmood, if those two are fit, you know, then then you actually could do with someone who's six foot six and um, an offer extra bit of height too. So. I guess, but also we are obviously a very long way away from that, given how quickly the seamers can go down injured, as we've seen in the last few weeks. Just to finish on Sam Curran, I, I, I would have been tempted to chuck him into Trent Bridge this week because if you're going to have, if they're going to go without a seamer, a spinner, I go, I, 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 if I was Ben Stokes, I'd rather have Sam Curran than Craig Overton at number eight. There's no point having you're five right arm seamers, is it? Similar, they're all similar players. Enough. Yeah, but it, but he doesn't really have to bowl that much to be fair because you've got you've got the three out and out seamers and your two sort of two two fill in bowl not for not fill in bowlers but fill in overs of of Curran and Stokes and it gives you a good balance at number eight. Well, I think that's a, a topic that uh, we can pick up next week. Bearing in mind, we'll see how uh, England do at Trent Bridge. That gets underway on Friday. Um, there's a full fixture list of T20 cricket on Friday. Sorry against Middlesex, uh, the standout one personally. But uh, yeah, they're coming thick and fast and we're going to be covering all of them here on Following on County Cricket. Uh, Nick and uh, Harmy, thanks so much for your time and thanks for your time as well. If you're watching on YouTube, leave us a question. We'll answer it next week. Uh, if you're listening on uh, TS2, TalkSport2 or on the Following on podcast, get involved at any of our Twitter handles and we'll be sure to answer your questions. Thanks so much for watching or listening. Following on County Cricketer.